nine tips for buying banked own houses at a deep discount in the 2020 economic collapse. Hey gang, today I'm gonna explain what is what is the REOs, banked owned properties. I'm gonna talk about the procedures of how to get the best deal possible at REOs. And I'm gonna talk about the pros and the cons of REOs versus auction. And you want to make sure that you stay to the very, very end because I'm going to show you a little secret map or a little secret pond that I fish at, which allows me to buy houses way below auction price, way below REOs. And so you want to make sure you stay to the very end to, to figure out what that pond is. But I'm going to share it for you totally for free. Now, I want to talk about the procedures of someone buying a home because it's very, very important because so you can understand how bank owned properties work so you can get the best deal which means you get it at the lowest price possible okay so the very first thing is the buyer wants to buy a home they don't have the money so usually they go to a bank and what happens is they go to a bank to get a loan there's a lot of stuff that the buyer has to do like have a great credit score or have a certain amount of down payment so on but what i want to focus on that there's two or three things that the buyer has to do um to be able to get a loan and, and these things happen at the title company. The very first thing the buyer has to do is sign something called DOT, okay? And that stands for a deed of trust, okay? And what that is, is a sec security instrument that the buyer pledges the bank, the property, in case he defaults. The next thing that the borrower or buyer has to do with the bank is sign something called a note okay and the note basically says hey you owe me this much money for this much time 30 year mortgage at this percent interest rate so on now all this stuff right here happens at the title company but for the sake of making it easy i'm eliminating that step okay now once the buyer signs the note signs a dot and you know pledges this house as a collateral to the bank in case he defaults, then what happens is that at closing, this is the title company, the escrow, depends where you are in the country, because some parts of the countries, they have trustees, other parts, they have judges um, to do the foreclosure. But what happens is that now the bank will wire in the money, the buyer will show up to escrow, and the seller will show up to escrow. And wh what happens is they sign up mile long paperwork and then the buyer will get the keys and the seller will get the cash and the bank wires it in and at that time um this the dot is now filed at the county clerk's office okay now so you understand the buying process is very crucial now what happens in, in a situation where the bank gets the property back is that because of the buyer signing a dot and if the buyer starts being late on it on on the payments on the loan on the house then what, what what because this buyer has to make payments if he doesn't make payments let's say the payments get cut off then what's going to happen is the bank's going to call the trustee if you're in like texas nevada but other parts of the country they have a judge so the procedure is a little bit different but it's, the end result is exactly the same so the end result is the bank in a trustee area if the borrower is late making payments they're going to call the trustee, then the trustee is going to give a notice, usually a 30-day notice to accelerate the loan. And if the borrower doesn't pay the bank for the total amount that's due, then what's going to happen is that the trustee is going to take this house and take it to the auction. Okay, And at the auction, what's going to happen is there's going to be a lot of people sitting there, what I call eyes. Right? They're going to be all sitting there bidding on these properties Okay, now to buy it. Now, if no one buys it, let's say if this investor buys the property, then this investor will, will get the house. If no one buys the property, okay, then from the auction, the house now from the auction goes into the bank's banking account or the bank's Excel sheet of you know profits and loss statements, etc. Or basically the bank is to have the property, okay? Um, and now what happens is that once the bank gets the property back, it goes to the auction, it doesn't sell, it gets the property, property back, then what, what, what the bank does is now it's gonna call on a real estate agent, okay? And this real estate agent is now going to put this house on something called the MLS, right? 
Now, on the MLS, it creates more eyeballs, okay? Anyone with the cell phone, anyone with a computer, anyone with a laptop, anyone with a, you know, anything, access to the internet, can now see this house for sale, okay? And that's what it means to be a banked-owned property, REOs. Now, let's talk about some of the pros and cons of REOs. Notice that, let's talk about some of the pros and cons of the auction. The auction, some of the pros is why investors like to go to the auction because it's super easy. Why is it easy? Because you just stand there and you don't have to do anything. The trustee comes in here and he'll have houses. Other people will have houses. But because it's easy, also on the other side, it has a negative point to it. Why? Because it's easy. Everyone shows up and they all are bidding on this house, which makes the price of the house go up. And usually uh, a lot of times the houses don't sell because there's too many people bidding on the house. OK, so one of the negative thing is there's too much competition. Another negative negative thing is that each one of these investors, if they buy the house, they need all the cash now. All the cash. They can't go to a bank. They can't get a mortgage. They got to drop down a briefcase full of money. Okay. Another disadvantage of buying at the auction is that that investor does not get to go inspect the property. Does not get, get have a chance to go look at it. Things of that nature. Now here she can drive outside of it before the auction uh, and maybe sneak in through the windows, but he's not going to be able to walk through the property. Okay. Now another negative aspect of buying houses at the auction is that you have to be sophisticated because you can be buying the second lien versus the first lien okay um or you could be buying you know a lien and then that might have a irs uh lien on it okay so you have to be very you know an insider or you have to have a lot of experience to know how to search for the title so make sure the chain is clean um you have to have a lot of experience with you know understanding the, the market and are you buying it too high are you buying it too low and so on and so on so this is one of the reasons i don't like auctions because there's too many eyeballs you need all the cash up front you gotta you you can't inspect the property and see the property uh and you, you know you need all the money up front and the couple other reasons why I don't like auctions. So, but what what makes it the positive side is it's easy. Anyone can sh show up to the auction and buy property. So it's very very easy. Okay, and sometimes you can get a good deal, but normally no because it all depends on how many people are standing at the auction side. Now, a lot of people think that REOs are way better than auctions. So let's talk about some of the negative things about REOs. I don't like REOs because as you can see, the very first thing is there's more eyeballs. The more eyeballs are on a property, the less likely it is that I or an investor can a good, get a good deal. So let me say that again. If you go to the auction, there might be 20 people looking at that house, okay, bidding. But if you put it on the MLS and you have thousands, potential thousands and thousands of people all over looking at the at a deal. So it's hard to find a good deal in, in a big hay haystack right but it's much easier to you know go to a place full of gold like a cabin full of gold and just pick up gold right because everything I say full of gold has gold all over in it right so what i'm trying to say is the less eyeballs there are the better deals i can get or the investor can get okay um but when it goes on the mls i don't i don't like reos because everyone all the agents all the investors all the you know retail buyers are all looking on the MLS, which means that the potential of me getting a good deal is slim. Another reason I don't like the ML, the MLS or REOs, okay, another reason I don't like REOs on the MLS is that I'm not going to be able to negotiate 60 cents on a dollar deal. I'm not going to be able to get seller financing or owner financing where the seller becomes my bank, okay? Um, and again, once again, the main reason I don't like REOs is you need all the money up front. There's too much competition. Um, and I'm not going to be able to get a deep discount, nor am I going to get some kind of creative seller financing. And I'm dealing with machines like the banks and the real estate agents. And I don't like machines. I don't like terminators. I like to deal with humans. So now I basically talked about some of the pros and cons of REOs. I talked about some of the pros and cons of auction. Now what I want to do is talk about a better strategy than REOs. I want to talk about a better strategy than auction. And this strategy is why is it better? Well, the very first reason why it's better is that I'm the only eyeball there. 
okay? Or there might only be two other eyeballs there. So less competition. And anytime there's less competition, it's always a better deal um, to find gold, okay? The next reason why I like this strategy I'm gonna share with you right now better than REOs or auction is that I don't need all the money, okay? Why? Because with this strategy that I'm gonna about to share with you is that I allow the seller to be my bank, okay? I don't need all the, all the money. I don't need the whole $200,000 to buy it, okay? Uh, because I can allow the seller to be my bank. Another reason why I like the strategy I'm about to share with you guys is that I can buy houses 60 cents on a dollar, 50 cents on a dollar, where I could not do that at the MLS REOs. I could not do that at the auction foreclosure because there's so many people there bidding that, you know, I'm not going to be able to get a deal 60 cents on a dollar. Okay, why am I able to get a deal 60 cents on a dollar? The strategy I'm going to share with you is because I'm one of the only eyeballs there. Okay, uh, now let's talk about some of the negatives. I, I talked about so many positives, but there's so many positives that, that can go on day and day. But let me just talk about one of the negatives because this is one of the major negatives to the strategy that I use. That is, that is hard work, right? It's hard work. You know, it's not easy. It's not like going to the auction and putting your foot up and just bidding on something. It's not like that, okay? Anyone knows that you can buy a better deal from Craigslist, from a home owner or from a someone that's trying to sell a car or someone that's trying to sell a motorcycle on Craigslist that's motivated versus going to the Honda dealership or the Toyota dealership, you know, they're going to screw you really good, okay? So the same philosophy applies here. But because it's not easy, it makes it hard, okay? Which which now requires another negative point is, is that you have to have skills, okay? What kind of skills do you need? Well, before I go into it, I'll talk to you about it. But the strategy that works better for me than, you know, doing REOs is what I call working with motivated sellers. Now, before the property goes to the auction, right? Before the property goes to the auction, before the property goes to the trustee, before he takes it to the auction, what I like to do is I like to market to these sellers um, and find these motivated sellers that are about to go behind in payments or will soon be behind in payments or already are behind in payments. And instead of waiting for the trustee to get in and go to the auction, there's hundreds of people there bidding on it or thousands of people bidding on it on the MLS. What I want to do is I want to find these motivated sellers before the bank gets a hold of the property, before the trustee gets a hold of the property. And that would brings to the skills part because in this strategy where I can buy houses at sixty percent off, where I can buy houses where the seller becomes my bank, where I can buy houses, you know, you know, so many different creative ways. Okay, I need to have skills. One of the skills that I need to have is I need to be a great marketer. Another skills I need to have is sell skills. Another skills I need to have is negotiation skills. Okay, um, other skills I have to do is I have to understand the structural of how to structure these deals. The, the local laws in my state. Um, so simply put, it makes it a lot harder to get in because you gotta have a lot of skills. It's not like it's going to the foreclosure auction, all you need is a briefcase full of money, right? You just need a briefcase full of money and any idiot can go to the auction. But if you wanna buy from homeowners direct, which is the way I like to do it, which is better than REOs, bank owned properties, which is way better than the auction, is to find these sellers before they go to the auction, the sellers are called motivated, right? And work a deal direct with them, and that's what I do, work a deal with direct with them where I can buy their house at a discount, where I just make payments to them, where I don't have to have all the cash up front. Now, with this strategy, okay, uh, I'm, gonna ha I'm gonna have to have different tools, right? I'm gonna have to have the cash, right? Now, I don't need all the cash, but I also need to have skills. Right? Well, I need to have marketing skills, negotiation skills. So not only do I need to have cash, but I don't need to have as much cash as going to the auction, but I still need to have some cash to make the back payments or pay for the seller's move or sweeten the tea, as I say. But I also need to have skills. So an auction investor, all he has to show up is with a briefcase full of cash. He doesn't really need to have skills to negotiate, to find sellers, to structure ways to create win-win or any of that stuff right they just need they just need the cash okay with this way which what i call finding motivated sellers well you need the cash and you also need skills and that's why it makes it hard right it, it makes this strategy is hard because 
you, you got to put some time into it. You got to learn stuff. But on the flip side of it, this strategy is where you could 10x your money, where you can 100x your money, where you could 1,000x your money. Because, for example, some of the deals that I've done is I've been here where I've marketed to a motivated seller, right? Well, I didn't know they were motivated. I was just doing marketing. I found a motivated seller. This, this is one of the deals that I've done. Okay, I found a motivated seller. They were behind about two months behind, right? So what, what I offered to do is cure that two months behind, okay? And pay for the seller's closing. And all together, I was into the property for about $3,000. And what I did is I got this property from the seller and, and their payments were ultra low. And what I did is I started renting this property for six, seven years. And then at the end, end of it, I ended up selling this property and putting over 100K into my pocket. So remember guys, I only started with $3,000, okay? And then at the end of six, seven years, I got 100K. Meanwhile, I was profiting $500 a month, okay? Positive cash flow from, from this house. So, you know, if you do 500 times 10, that's $5,000 a year that, that I was getting from this house. And I did 10 because the other two months, one is I'm using for vacancy and one I'm using for property management. So it's only 10 for me, um, 10 months. The other two months are for expenses. So this, this exact house, I made $5,000 a year from it. And after six years, See, that's another $30,000 that I made. And then I, I was able to cash out $100,000 into my pocket. So I, I roughly made about $130,000, a little bit more than that, um, with only investing $3,000, okay? Now, there's nowhere in hell can I go do this. I can't do that in stock, I can't do that in gold, I can't do that in Bitcoin, I can't do that in any of these um, structures out there, investment structures or vehicles out there, okay? Now, I can't even do that if I went and bought an REI. REO. I couldn't even do that if I went to the auction because there's no way in hell I can buy a house of, you know, $200,000 magnitude for $3,000, okay? Because at the auction, I got to bring all the money in. If I had gone to a traditional money lender, that wouldn't work either. If I had gone to a hard money lender, it wouldn't work. So the only reason it worked is because the seller was highly motivated. I had the skills to market to them. I had the skills to build rapport with them. I had the skills for the guy to like me, to build trust. I, I had the cash to make his rear payments. I had the education to structure the deal to create a win for him and win for me uh, and, and, and i knew how to make the t-suite and i create a win-win situation there's nowhere in hell in, in america that, that i can spend three thousand dollars invested in over six to seven years and make a hundred and thirty thousand dollars guys it's just there's nowhere okay um and nowhere okay so this is the power of dealing with homeowners direct versus going to REOs or auctions, okay? Now, it is a lot of hard work. Now, if you're interested on learning how to do this, how to find these homeowners, how to work with them direct, how to structure it, how to do massive marketing without a lot of marketing budget, um, how to negotiate, all the stuff that you need, then I have two options for you guys, okay? Actually, three. The very first thing is that my academy, guys. My academy, you have all my courses that I have. There's over 15, 16 courses that I sell for almost $33,000. Right now, you can get it for just $67 a month, guys. You get have access to all my courses, unlimited access, plus coaching for just $67 a month. And to get more information about that, just go to My Real Estate Dojo or go to academy.mrnofluff.com. The other option I have for you guys is that if you don't have your money right and you're broke, then you should do the new flip. Okay. What is the new flip? The new flip is, is a game that allows you to make money today, okay, um, and with only one hundred dollar capital. So all you need is a one hundred dollar capital, and if you do the new flip, you have the potential of making two x all the way to seven x. That means that you can put two hundred dollars, I mean a hundred dollars in and make two hundred, or you could put one hundred dollars in and make seven hundred. Depends on the deal, okay. And again, this this strategy you cannot do that anywhere else in America that I know of, where you only need a one hundred dollar investment to to risk because it is a risk, you know. So the new flip will teach you how to risk your money. A, you can lose it, or you can. 2x it or 7x it or 5x it. The most I've ever done is 7x. Um, a lot of my students do three to four or five x's all the time. So the new flip is a way where you can learn how to make money, learn about business, learn about real estate investing, learn about bookkeeping, learn about sales negotiation, marketing, all the stuff you need, okay? Um, with only a $100 capital that you can 
2x or 7x, or you can lose it, okay? Because that's what entrepreneurship is, a risk, okay? So the new flip, normally I sell for 500 bucks right now. You can just get it for 67 bucks. Again, where can you get this? MyRealEstateDojo.com, or you can go the new flip dot Mr. No Fluff.com, guys. And last but not least, if, if you have your money right, okay, and you want to go ahead and find these deals, you want to buy rental properties without using all your money, or if you want to buy uh, fix and flips without going to a hard money lender, or if you're, if you're looking to uh, buy your own property, or if you're looking to have passive income, then you need to think about joining my profit sharing, guys. My profit sharing is one of the most advanced things that I have. I meet with you on a weekly basis for one hour right through your computer with you and my other students and we work together closely on uh, how to find deals in your backyard. It doesn't matter if you're in California, if you're in Chicago, you're in Oklahoma, you're in Kansas, whatever. I have students everywhere and I help you how to find deals in your own backyard uh, using free marketing and using the same strategies that I use uh, to find deals, to structure deals, and to create win-wins where you're able to put very little amount of money in and have a potential for big money, okay? Now, this is not financial advice, guys. This is just my opinions, okay? Uh, but the story that I share with you are true stories that deals that I have done, and this is why I don't like REOs because there's too much competition. I can't see the property. I got to have all the cash up front. And then another reason I don't like auction is there's too much competition. I can't see the property. I got to have all the money up front. And this is why I love doing what I do, which is working with motivated sellers. And the reason I love it is because I can buy houses at a deep discount. And I mean deep. More than I could from the auction. I can get seller financing where the seller becomes my bank. Um, I have all the time in the world because usually I'm the only I, the only person out there, maybe one other guy versus 100 or 1 million that's on the MLS. So working with, direct with homeowners has allowed me to uh, create freedom for myself uh, instead of working for the man. So if you're interested in the new flip or the academy or the profit sharing, then just go to myrealestatedojo.com. It's all there. Guys, click the like button, share this message, and let me know what state you're in. Peace.